theory. But before we talk about the quantum theory, there are a whole bunch of different things that we need to make sure that we discuss. Things like physics and things like the wave and, um, and doing calculations. And how is it that scientists were able to figure out what the model of the atom was like? And so what we're going to do is talk a little bit about that history. And that's what this, this whole unit is about, is how is it that we know or we think we know what the atom looks like at this point? So it says for the past 200 years, scientists have been trying to accumulate evidence that support the atomic model. But this atomic model has changed so much. So it started off with Democritus, Lavoisier, Dalton, Newton, and eventually we get to what Schrodinger thinks it is. And before it was just that it was something that was indivisible. And so we end up getting to this point where now we see it as something that you can divide. And there are certain instruments that we can use, super, super expensive instruments that we can use, like things like cyclotrons. Anybody know what cyclotrons do? They're called atom somethings. Smashers, good. And so they're, they're basically magnets, and they spin particles around, and then they, they crash them together, and then they end up studying um, what the energy basically is what they're studying now. So we'll talk more and more about this type of stuff as well. So we've been led through time um, with different things regarding this model of the atom. So one of the most striking things about the chemistry of the elements is the periodicity. And we're going to talk about the periodic table in this unit also, and how the elements are set up with their electrons in a certain way as you go from left to right and you continue on the periodic table, almost like reading a book from left to right and then you keep on going with the lines. Um, we're going to talk about different energy levels and how the electrons fill into di different energy levels and why that matters. Before we discuss that, let's consider the historic classical models of the atom and the masterminds that brought it, as well as some physics. So one of the ways that energy travels through space is by something that starts with an E. Yep, electromagnetic you can say. radiation. Yes, nice. Electromagnetic radiation. Awesome. Electromagnetic radiation. What are some examples? So if you want to just call out some examples of things that you've heard are forms of radiation, of electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. Like what? Microwaves. Microwaves. Awesome. X -rays. Microwaves, I heard what? X-rays, very good. Anything else that you've heard that is a type of radiation? Like ultraviolet. Perfect. The UV rays, very good. Anything else? Radio waves, light. Awesome, visible light. Good. Radio waves, visible light. Okay, so that's a nice start there. So it says, although these are all, all of these seem to be very different from one another, so if you considered, if you thought about something like radio waves and then you thought about visible light, and you're like, well, those are pretty different from each other. They're all similar in that they all travel at some speed. Anybody know what that speed is called? Speed of light. Awesome. They all travel at the speed of light. But you would have to be in a vacuum in order to get the, to, to be at the speed of light, okay, to truly be at the speed of light, which means what? Void of everything. Yeah, void of everything. And they all exhibit similar, and this is something new, similar wave-like behavior, that all of these particles actually move in wave-like motion, okay? So there are two things that are similar about them. One is they all move at the speed of light, and the second one is that they're moving in wave-like motion. So here's this electromagnetic spectrum, and so you can see here the radio waves, the microwaves, the infrared, there's the V, the visible light, the ultraviolet, the x-rays, and the gamma rays. And so there's a really easy way to remember these in order, and I'm going to talk about in order of what because it can either be increasing or decreasing. It depends on what you're being asked, okay? What you're, being, what you're comparing it to. And the mnemonic that I have is, run, Mark, it's Vicky, your ex-girlfriend. So everybody say it with me, ready? Run, run Mark, Mark, it's Vicky, Vicky your ex-girlfriend. And if you remember this, you'll remember it in order of, well, what do you see is happening to the wave here? Is the wave getting slower or getting faster as we get closer and closer to gamma? Faster. Awesome. But we don't say, we don't call it speed. It's something that starts with an F. We say that it's increasing in frequency. Awesome. We say that the frequency is increasing. So going this way, we say that this end has a high 
frequency. And the way that we write frequency, we're going to use a Greek letter. And the Greek letter is this, it looks like a, a V, okay? It's actually called nu. Everybody say nu. nu. Okay? It looks like a V and a U kind of mix, so it's called nu. And um, I call this, because of that, I call it frequency. You're going to hear me say, what is it? It's the frequency. And the reason why I say frequency is so that way you can get um, what the variable is right. Okay? So it looks like a V, so we're going to say frequency. Frequency is what I'm going to call it. Okay? So now, um, the other thing that you can be looking at is called the length of the wave, but we don't call it the length of the wave. We call it the wavelength. wavelength. Okay. What can you see happens to the wavelength as we go from left to right? Does the wavelength, the length of a wave, get shorter or get longer? Shorter. shorter. Awesome. So these are longer waves, and then these end up getting to be shorter waves. So that means that we actually, this is the lowest wavelength. This is the lowest wavelength. And the symbol for wavelength, if I were to draw, well, like we have waves on here. If I were to draw a wave, and I don't know if anybody else notices this, okay, this is not anything that I found in the books, but I was trying to figure out um, a way to remember that this symbol, it's called lambda. Everyone say lambda. lambda. Watch what happens when I just put a wave on a, like as if I were holding a wave on like a, a rod or something. So if I erase, oops, my eraser's too big. If I erase just in there and just in there, that is the symbol for lambda, okay? I don't know if that's how they came up with it, but if you take a wave and you like put a wave on a rod on its side, this Greek letter called lambda looks like the wave, okay? So when you draw it, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of do a little bit of a, um, it's like a squiggly, okay? Like it's part of a wave, and then you're just going to put a line through it, okay? If you want to see what it looks like typed, if you look down at the bottom of the page, down here, that's what it looks like typed, okay? And that's what new looks like typed. So I went to my Greek alphabet, and that's, um, that's what those look like typed. Okay, so that's going to be lambda or wavelength. All right, so we noticed two things. And, and by the way, so radio waves have really long waves. How would you know, without even looking at something like this, that radio waves have long waves? Have really long waves. But let's say you didn't see any of this. Let's say we didn't talk about any of this. And I made a con I, I asked, are radio waves long or short versus x-rays? Are x-rays long or short? Okay? So let's start with let's start with the radio waves and then we'll come back to the x-rays. What would you say about radio you waves? Listen to the radio when you're driving in a car and the radio waves trans or travel over a really long distance to get from the station to your car. Awesome! Where are most of the stations, the ones that you're listening to? Where are they located? Yeah, Detroit. I know sometimes people are even listening to stations um, in Windsor, so maybe maybe in Farmington Hills. So we know that these radio waves must must be traveling far distances. What about X-rays? How would you know that X-rays are at the shorter end? Anybody been to the dentist dentist before and had to get an X-ray? Okay, what do they make you do? Put on what kind of vest? Wow. A lead vest. You wear a lead vest when you go to get an X-ray. Why? Yeah, perfect. It blocks the radiation. Okay. So um, as far as the x-rays go, so your friend is going to the dentist today to get an x-ray. Do you wear a lead jacket? No. Only the person that's in that room. Actually, they'll even say, as long as you go behind the wall, then you're fine. These x-rays are very damaging, but because their wavelength is so short, they have such a small wavelength, they don't travel far distances. So they, if you've ever seen the machine, they get it up real close, right? So typically it's a machine that comes right around and it's very, very close to you. So it is very penetrating. They do, they do have a very, very high frequency. Their frequency is high as compared to some of these other waves like the radio waves and the microwaves. Um, so they will penetrate, but um, they're short, okay? The wavelength is short for those. Okay, so you can see on here, what I have is the different, in meters, I have the distances of the weight of each wavelength. And so what we're going to talk about is what is a wavelength? How do you get that distance? 
So every element emits something if it's heating by passing electricity through something. Every element is going to emit, anybody know, starts with an R? Some form of radiation. Good. Some form of radiation. Now the radiation could be visible light, which it will be when we pass the gas through these, you'll see in just a second, if it's heated by passing electricity through its vapor <laughs> phase or its gas phase. Atoms absorb the energy and then they're going to lose the energy by emitting it as light. We're going to talk about this more in depth in just a little bit. So the atomic emission spectrum is a pattern of frequencies that's obtained by passing light by atoms in the gaseous state through some type of prism. And you have this prism, you have glasses that you're going to be wearing in just a second, and so we're going to go through those in just a little bit. We'll do some calculations and then we'll come back and do this. And that corresponds to one exact frequency of light that's being given off. And this is how we get the composition of the universe. Um, what type of instrument will gather light and then transmit it to some type of, um, of spectrode? And then we can see, we can take a look up in space and see that there are stars and things like that. What type of instrument? Yeah, I heard it starts with the T. What? Telescopes. Telescopes. Awesome. All right. And um, there are a few different ways that you can contact a friend that lives in a different country. So now we know we can send an email, we can use the phone, so we can make a call, there are different things that we can do, um, we can FaceTime, but um, sending a letter, a material object, which we don't really do much anymore, a material object actually moves from one point to another, it's carrying information, it's carrying energy. By telephone, information and energy move from one point to another, but there's no material object that's actually moving, so what carries your message? So what do you have that carries your message? Yeah, perfect. So these are what types of waves? Good, sound waves. Awesome. A sound wave carries your message from your vocal cords to the phone and then passes through optical fiber into free space. Types of waves. So mechanical waves, there are three major types of waves. Mechanical waves are, you'll talk more about in physics when you do physics. These actually need something in order for the wave to see the propagation of the wave, okay? It needs something. So it needs a string, it needs a rod, it needs water, it needs air. There's something that it needs in order for the wave to keep moving, okay? And so we call those mechanical waves. So waves that require air, water, stretch string, or steel rod. Examples, like a water wave, you wouldn't be able to see a water wave without the water, obviously. Anybody want to say another kind of wave? We talked a little Sound wave, awesome, the sound wave. If you were in space and you tried to scream, what would happen? Nothing. nothing. Why not? Perfect, there's nothing to carry the wave across. Okay, very good. A stretch string um, or steel, oh, what, what other types of waves can you think of? Uh, what about um, in the earth with, and, and these are what may cause earthquakes? Seismic waves, nice. Seismic waves, so by the movements of the plates. Okay, electromagnetic waves, these require no medium. There does not, there's no need for anything else to get the wave to move. The wave will go without anything being there, including in empty space, okay? And um, these electromagnetic waves are the ones that we were talking about up there. So that whole, everybody say it with me again, run mark. Run, Mark, it's Vicky, your ex-girlfriend. Any of those will actually go without any need for um, any type of material to, to, for propagation. So they travel from quasars to the vacuum of space all at the same speed. And again, we call that the speed of light. But instead of writing it this time, we're going to use C as the variable for it. And it's C equals 3.00 times 10. Now, you can do to the 10th, but we're going to do to the 8th because we're going to use meters per second instead of centimeters per second, okay? So if you use centimeters, then it's 10 to the 10th. So some of you may know this as 10 to the 10th meters per second. So 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Example, so let's write them down now. Okay, what is the R for in run? Radio. What's the M for in mark? Microwaves. What's the it's? What's the I? Infrared. Infrared. Very good. Run, Mark. It's Vicky. What's that? Visible. Visible light. Awesome. 
visible light. And when you write visible light, we're going to also write the colors in Roy G. Biv, but they got rid of indigo. I'm not sure why. I still think it's important, but um, it's Roy G. Biv. What is the R? Red, Red orange, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Okay, so in order. And the cool thing is about Roy G. Biv that Roy G. Biv also, it's written in here, but I don't know if you can see it. So it's in there. It's in the same order, meaning violet has a higher frequency than red does. So red has a lower frequency and violet has a higher frequency. And we're going to talk about the colors and why you see certain colors. Okay. Um, and red then, if violet has the um, fastest or the, the highest frequency, then red, red must have the highest what? Wavelength. wavelength. Awesome. It has the longest wavelength. So red's wavelength is actually longer than violet's would be. Okay. So um, run mark, it's Vicky, your, remember it's the U we're looking at. Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet, UV, perfect. X, girlfriend, what's the X? X-rays and girlfriend, gamma. Gamma, awesome. Okay, so the third type are matter waves, and this is typically a beam of particles, and the particles could be electrons, that can exhibit wave-like properties. So like, oh, there, I have it right there, like electrons. Okay, characteristics of a wave. So let's just talk about um, the parts of a wave here. Do you remember what this symbol is called here? It starts with an L. Lambda, Lambda perfect. Lambda, I know I'm gonna spell it wrong here. I think it's just L-A-M-D-A. B-D-A, B -D -A. awesome. Lambda. So lambda is what we use for wavelength. And if it's wavelength, then the units of it, length, in scientific um, terms would probably be what? What unit would we use for length? Meters. Awesome. So wavelength is actually measured in meters. A lot of times I use the nanometer for these, okay? Or maybe the picometer, which is 10 to the negative 12. Remember what nanometer is? To the 9th. Good, perfect. Negative 9 if we use um, negatives. So this is the distance between something. It's defined as the distance between, anybody know? Two top parts on a wave? Crests. Between two crests of a wave. Okay, and you could go from crest to crest, you could go trough to trough. You could start at the beginning of a wave and go up and back. That's also one wavelength. So we're going to talk about that in just a second here. This next one, anybody remember what we called this? What's the Greek letter? New. Awesome. N-U. New. And this is, I'm going to spell it frequency instead of frequency. So I'm going to do it with a V. I know it's supposed to be an F. So frequency. And anybody know what the units are of frequency? We know speed. If I said how fast is someone going, what units would you usually miles give me? Per miles. miles per hour, kilometers per second, meters per minute, whatever it is, right? But in this case, we're not going to use the distance. It's just going to be, anybody know? Per second. Per second. Good. The units of this are one over seconds or per second. Okay, I'm going to talk about why it's per second, what per second. And this is also called, starts with an H, hertz. Nice. People did their homework. Yay. It's also called a hertz, okay? Or it's written HZ also. Okay, the frequency is basically the number of wave cycles to pass a certain point per unit time. Number of wave cycles per unit time, basically to pass a certain point per unit time, but it's the number of wave cycles per unit time, okay? So again, you can use HZ or you can use per second. You can also say that um, if it's one over second, so let's just do this real quick. So it's one over seconds. Um, you can also write seconds to something, to some power. To the negative one. To the negative one, awesome. You can write it as seconds to the negative one if you do something to the negative exponent, that's the inverse of it, which means it's one over that. So you can write it as seconds to the negative one. 
You can also write it as HZ um, hertz. So any of those units can be used for frequency. Okay, A is called the amplitude. And we're not going to talk too much about the amplitude. The only thing that we're going to do is define it. And the amplitude is the distance from, anybody want to guess? Origin, 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 awesome, up crest. to a crest or down to a trough because it's the same distance. But it's not crest to trough. It's origin up or origin down. So distance from origin to crest to the highest part of the wave. And C, we already said, is the constant. And this is the speed of what? Speed of light, and it's equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's the speed of light. Okay, so let's try one of the calculations, and then we'll come back and do um, the demonstration after that, or two calculations. Okay, before we do that, um, I told you that I'm not very good at drawing, so I have tricks, kind of, to make it better. What I want you to do is I want you to put a dot right in the middle of this line. If you can find the middle and put a dot right in the middle of this line. And what I'm going to do is don't do it yet because I want you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to go up through a crest and down through a trough and back to the dot. Okay, so I'm going to go through one wave cycle. So I'm going to go up through a crest, down through a trough, and back. So I'm kind of hitting like at the middle point. So I'm going to do this again. Up through a crest, down through a trough, and back. Those don't look very equal, but it's okay. So if you want to try to make them equal. And at the end of this, I'm going to say one second. And at the end of this one, I'm going to say one second. Please try to fill the wave into each one of these. Okay. Now I'm going to change colors for the second one. Actually, let's label this first. So let me get a different color so that we can label this. Okay. So where's the crest? The very top, it is the, the highest part of your wave is called the crest. So that's the crest at the very top, bless you. Where's the trough? Bottom. The very bottom is the trough. Okay, one wavelength. One wavelength can be from the beginning to the end, up through a crest and down through a trough. This can be called one wavelength. That's one wavelength. Okay, you can just say wavelength. But how is it defined in the books? From crest to crest. Crest to crest. So we're going to go from a crest to the next crest, and you can see that it's the same distance. This one is the same distance, or should be the same distance, um, as the other one. Or you can also go from trough to trough. Awesome. You can also go from trough to trough, and that would also be the same distance of a wavelength. Okay, so any of those could be written correctly, would be written correctly. Amplitude, it's from origin up to a crest. That's your amplitude, not crest to trough. It's from origin up or origin down, that's the amplitude. Okay, and the last thing is, uh, actually let's do this way and then we'll talk frequency real quick. Okay, so this one is a lower frequency. It has a long wavelength, but it has a lower frequency. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch it up. And let me just choose a different color here. And um, I want you to draw a dot halfway like we did before. And then I want you to draw a dot halfway in between the beginning and the middle and halfway between the middle and the end. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw one wavelength between the every dot. So I'm going to go up and back, up, they might overlap a little bit, up and back, up and back. Okay. So the first thing is, what can you tell me about the frequency between the top and the bottom wave? The bottom one is? Higher. Higher. It's moving faster, okay? The waves are moving faster than this one right here. So on this, again, we've got our crest. We know our crest. We know our trough. Let's just show what a wavelength would look like on this one. So this may, on mine, this may be the best place where I'm not overlapping on things. But from there to there is my wavelength on this wave. Okay? So it's from here to here. Well, can you tell me about the distance of the wavelength between the first and the second one? How much shorter? Half. Awesome. It's half. Okay? So 
let's talk frequency for just a minute here. So if I said that this were one second in time, the way that frequency is defined is it's the number of wave cycles to pass per unit time. Could be 100 seconds, it could be 20 minutes, it could be uh, hours, okay? And you could do it either way as long as it's per some unit of time. But we're gonna do it based on seconds. How many waves are passing per one second here? Two. This would be called two, what? I heard it. Two hertz. Frequency equals two hertz on this one. So if that's the case, what's our frequency on the second one? Four. Four. Nice. Why four? Perfect. It goes through four cycles, and it's double. It's one, two, three, four wave cycles. So that would be four hertz. So obviously this one has a higher frequency. So what about the wavelength? It's shorter. If the frequency is faster and the wavelength is shorter, we say that they're related how? Inversely. Inversely. Awesome. Okay. So therefore, I don't know if we can write it maybe somewhere over here. Therefore, frequency and wavelength are inversely related. So when one is long, the other one is low. When one is uh, short, the other one is high. Okay? So just keeping that in mind. Okay, and then the last thing before we do our demo is let's just try these calculations out. So there's an equation that relates C, which is called the constant. We're going to say the speed of light. Okay? It's always a constant value. It's always the same value, and it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second always. Okay? That's always going to be your speed of light. You don't have to memorize it. I will give it to you on um, quizzes and stuff like that. But the sooner that you remember it, the easier it is for you. You don't have to keep going back to see what it is. Okay? This, we said, is our wavelength in units of meters. Okay? And this is our frequency in units of hertz or inverse seconds. Inverse seconds are 1 over seconds, which is why, if you look at the units, when you multiply meters times one over seconds, what do you get? Meters per second, okay? So that's the unit for speed of light. So we want to make sure that they work, otherwise your equation's not going to work, okay? So what if I wanted to arrange this algebraically? Will you ever solve for C? Why will you never be solving for C? It's a constant. So this equation, even though that's the way it's written in the books and typically on quizzes and tests, that's the equation you're given, You'll never use it in this format because you'll never have to solve for C. What you will have to solve for is lambda or nu. If you're solving for lambda, how algebraically can you, let me just do uh, this, I'll erase it after. How, if you have C equals lambda times nu, how can you get uh, lambda alone? Divide, divide by nu. But if you divide by nu on this side, you have to divide, divide by it on the other side. So those cancel out, and what you're left with is lambda is equal to C over nu. Okay, let's try this again. Let's do this, and then I'll erase it. Let's do C equals lambda times nu. Now let's say we're solving for frequency or frequency. How can you get frequency alone? Divide by lambda. But if you do it to this side, you have to do it to the other side. So nu is equal to C over lambda. Okay? If you just remember that C, speed of light, is going to be on top, then that makes it really easy. You don't have to algebraically do this ever again. Okay? So the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, will always go on top, and then you'll divide by either the frequency or the wavelength. Okay, so let's try the calculation out. The first one is asking us to calculate wavelength. So we're looking for the wavelength, which means I'm solving for what um, which variable? Lambda. lambda. Awesome. So we're going to write lambda equals. Lambda equals what? C over nu. nu. Perfect. Okay. And it says, to calculate the wavelength of light emitted by a sodium lamp, I'm going to want it in nanometers. But this equation is not going to give me nanometers, which means we'll have to convert after using the metric system. Okay. If the frequency of radiation is 5.1 times 10 to the 14th seconds to the negative 1. Let's fill in what we know. 
Do you know C? So lambda is equal to, let's just rewrite it, what's C? What's the value of it? 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Awesome. We are given the frequency. It says the frequency of radiation is this number right here. <coughs> so where does that number go? Down underneath. So 5.10 times 10 to the 14th. Seconds to the negative 1, which is the same thing as 1 over seconds. So you can write it as 1 over seconds or seconds to the negative 1. What happens to our units when you divide meters per second by 1 over seconds? So per second divided by per second is just meters. So this actually cancels out, and you're going to be left with meters, which is perfect because wavelength should be in meters. Okay. So in your calculator, I want you to plug this in. Don't forget that what you want to type here is 3E8 divided by 5.10E14. Okay? No carrots, please. No carrots. If you use carrots, you have to use parentheses and it gets very annoying. You'll get have different answers than somebody else, and you're not sure why. It's probably if you're because you're using the carrot. So 3E8 divided by 5.10 or 5.1E14, and please tell me what you get. And we're gonna to round to three digits. We're always gonna report our answers with three digits that are not zero, like not starting with a zero. Do you want this in scientific notation? Scientific notation's perfect. Um, then I got six times 10 to the negative seven. And give me three digits if you can. So in your calculator, go out three numbers. So six, it's five, five. Oh yeah, yeah, perfect. So it's just rounded. 5.88, 5.82, 5.882. Perfect, so that means it would be 5.88, awesome. 5.88 times 10 to? Negative seven. seven. And these units are meters. Okay. But the answer I'm supposed to have is in nanometers, not in meters. So what we're gonna do is, this is the correct answer, okay, but we need to convert. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a bridge and I'm gonna cross my unit where? Opposite, bottom right corner, and I have meters, and I'm going to nanometers. Without looking at a unit line, do you remember where nano is? Nine. Yeah, nano's at nine, and meters base. So we have ten to the nine. Remember, the number one goes with the bigger unit, the exponent goes with the smaller unit. Which one's smaller, nano or meters? Which one's further to the right? Nanometers. So we're going to write one times ten to the ninth there, so what number goes with a meter? One. Awesome. The bigger one gets a one. So all you're going to do to that answer you just got in your calculator is multiply your answer, so whatever your answer is. And typically, if you just start on most calculators, you can just start typing and it'll use it. But otherwise, you can just say times, and it'll multiply by it. You may have to get your answer, like hit second and go to answer. Times 1E9. And please tell me what you get. 5.88 Perfect. 5.88 times 10 to the second nanometers, which is also the same thing as 588 nanometers. Okay, so your calculator may now switch it to 588. Either answer is correct. Typically, if it's anything more than 10 to the fourth, I'd want it in scientific notation, but if it's less, then you can keep it. Okay, let's try this question, and then we'll take a break and do the demo. Okay, so the brilliant red colors that are in fireworks, so if you've ever seen the different colors in fireworks, we will have a time where you'll be able to choose different topics and fireworks is a topic for presenting. And they'll talk all about the different colors and how they get them and what it is that they use, what types of chemicals are being used. So these are due to the emission of light with wavelengths around 650 nanometers. So what is this representing in nanometers? Wavelength, awesome, it says wavelengths. So that's my lambda right there. And as soon as you see some new number, try to see if you can label it. When strontium salts are heated, so we use a chemical called strontium, and it can be different uh, anions, and we'll talk about those anions in one of the next units. Calculate the frequency. So what are we looking for here? Frequency, which is nu. And nu is equal to, if you come back up to your equations, how are we going to solve for nu? C over lambda. Awesome. So we know C, so let's just rewrite this again. Nu equals C, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 
times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by what's wrong with our value? It's not in meters. Awesome. It's in nanometers, and you cannot write this in nanometers. It needs to be in meters in order to use it in the equation. So we're going to come over here, and first we're going to convert it. We're going to convert this number, 650 nanometers, and we're going to switch it into, so cross your unit opposite, and we're going to switch it into meters. How is it different from the one we did up here? Perfect. Why would you have to divide? Good. Now you're going from smaller to bigger. Before we were going from bigger to smaller unit. So nanometer is smaller. So my 1 times 10 to the 9th goes down there with my nanometer. And what number goes with the meter? 1. So go ahead and divide this and tell me what you get. So 650 divided by 1E9. And please um, let me know, so once we're done, if you're, not, if you're off by one place, it's very possible that you're doing divided by 1 times 10E. Remember, it's not times 10E, it's just E. So 1E9. What are you getting? 6.5. Perfect. 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7. I'm going to give you a little hint here, okay? Colors, the colors of the spectrum are in the hundreds in nanometers, which means they will always, for the most part, they'll probably want the colors will be to 10 to the negative 7th in meters, okay? Um, so because they're in the hundreds, then you have two places over, and that's why it's not 10 to the 9th, they're negative 9. Okay, so we're going to take this number, and that's what's going to go down here, 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. What happens to my units here? What cancels out? Meters, meters cancel out. What are you left with? Seconds. Not seconds. One over. One over seconds per second is what you're left with. Because if you divide meters by meter, you get one, but it's still over seconds. So that's one over seconds. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead and divide this. So again, in your calculator, you're typing 3E8 divided by 6.5E negative 7. So 3E8 divided by 6.5E negative 7. And please tell me what you get. 4.62, awesome, and I like that she's giving me three numbers. Times 10 to the 14. Times 10 to the 14. Are you agreeing? Yes? Yeah. Awesome. And the units, if this is frequency, should be hertz or inverse seconds. So you can write 1 over seconds, or you can write hertz, or you can write seconds to the negative 1. Any of those would be correct answers. Okay. All right, and that's it for the quantum calculation.